In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Piskel, the free online editor for animated sprites and pixel art, just like it says there. Um, so this is a really awesome website that I discovered years ago, and I have my students use it uh, for creating their sprites for their video games. Um, so it is completely free, and you can log in using your Google account, and then you can actually save your sprites uh, to your gallery. Uh, they have some cool examples here, and yes, you can do animations, as you can see, and the animation editor is actually quite nice. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Create Sprite. I've already logged in. Um, and so I'm going to kind of just take you through the basics here if uh, this is your first time. So the very first thing you do is you start off with a 32 by 32 pixel um, sprite. And you know that because down here in the bottom right hand corner it'll say 32 by 32. If you know that you want a different size, you can come over here on the right hand side and you can click on the um, resize icon. It's the second one here. Um, you can then go ahead and you can, you have two choices. Um, if I change this from 32 to say 64, you'll see that both the height and the width change at the same time. If I don't want them to do that, I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. Now I can go ahead and I can make the height be 96. And so now it'll actually be um, taller than it'll be wide. And if I click on resize, you'll see that now I've got a taller canvas. This would be something that would be great for a character. So I could go ahead and you know have the head be about here, um, body about here, you know, something like that. And I could just go ahead and draw. Um, so for this, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to 64 by 64 and hit resize. Oops. There we go. And hit resize and there we go. All right, so pretty straightforward. Um, these are all the drawing tools and color picker over here. You've got your animation uh, frames right here. We're not going to cover animation in this video. Um, you've got your four brush sizes, so real straightforward. One pixel, two pixels, three and four. You kind of get the idea. Uh, can't go any smaller, can't go any bigger. Um, there is an eraser tool, uh, and, and again, you can do the eraser in uh, one pixel, two pixels, three pixels, and four pixels wide. Okay, so there you go. Um, if you do a closed-in shape, then you can go ahead and use the paint bucket tool and you can just tap and fill it in just like you would expect. The color picker, you have your primary color and your secondary color. If you tap on the primary color, you've got a standard color picker here, which is great. And there you are. Um, you've got a rectangle tool. And one really helpful thing is that if you um, hover over a tool, the tool tip that pops up tells you extra things that you can do. So, for instance, let me uh, let me just get rid of all this. Um, if I do the rectangle tool, I can go ahead and make all kinds of rectangles if I want. There you are. But if I hold down, it says if I hold down the shift key, it will keep a one-to-one -one ratio. And that just means a perfect square. So if I hold down shift and drag out, you'll see that I'll make a perfect square. And there you are. Um, same thing with the circle tool. You can make um, ellipses. But if you hold down the uh, shift key, you can make a perfect circle. And there you go. Um, next is the move tool. So it's the little hand here. So if I go ahead and I draw my artwork up here, and then I realize that I don't want it up in the top left corner, I really want it more in the center, I can just do the move tool, and I can go ahead and I can drag it and move it wherever I want. However, if you drag it off the canvas and then drag it back, you'll see that it basically goes away. Um, you, of course, can undo a couple times and get it back. Um, I sometimes use that move tool to actually just clear my canvas and just swipe it off to the side, um, and then I can just start again. So I just use it as kind of a canvas clearer. Um, there are some selection tools. There's actually three selection tools. Um, I'll get into those in a little bit of a later video. They're not as good um, as uh, Photoshop, um, but you wouldn't expect them to be. Um, but they do work uh, quite well. I just don't usually 
have the need to use them that much. Uh, moving on. Um, the next one is the Lighten tool, and this is a really nice one here. So if I go ahead and drag out a circle, fill it in. So it says here that um, if you hold down uh, the Command key on a Mac, the Control key on a Windows, uh, it will darken. So if I just draw over it, it's going to lighten here. And I realize I'm using a light green, so that probably wasn't very good. Uh, decision there. I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a darker color. Okay, so now if I do lighten here, I can go ahead and lighten up this left hand, top left hand side, and eventually it will go to uh, white. Um, but you'll see it adds in all these fantastic um, lighter colors or lighter values of the base blue that I'm using, and so it uh, it's really nice. And then if I hold down again on a Mac, if I hold down the Command key or um, control on a Windows machine, um, you'll darken, you'll do the opposite. And um, again, you'll see that it will do darker values of the blue, and it will go ultimately up to black. Go ahead and swipe that. Um, the next tool is really great for video games and certainly character designs, the vertical mirror pen. And this is where uh, whatever you draw on one side will mirror on the other side. So really great for drawing um, symmetrical kinds of things. Um, characters, character faces, um, you name it. Um, it's just really good for that. So you can go ahead and Um, with a lot of things in art, um, certainly you might not want your character uh, to be completely symmetrical, so just go back to the pen tool and then you can go ahead and add in some extra wrinkles and scars and things like that just to make your artwork a little bit more interesting. Um, the next tool going down called Paint All Pixels of the Same Color. This is a really, um, this is a really interesting one. So let me just go ahead and put in um, some other colors here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in a really simple uh, blue body here. Okay, not my best work, but um, gets us some other colors. And I'll go ahead and I'll give him kind of a reddish, reddish tie. Okay, so maybe that's his reddish tie there. Um, and I decided that I really want the blue shirt to be a different color. I can just click on this, and it's um, it's related to the paint bucket tool. And so if I just click on it, and now I want um, maybe a, a green, I just click on it, and it will do that um, anywhere. The other cool thing is that um, if I have blue anywhere else uh, on the sprite, it'll do it for the entire um the entire uh, canvas. So you can see that it just replaced it. So it's just a really nice um, feature. Okay, um, let's see. The next tool is the stroke tool, and that is simply for drawing straight lines, angled lines, um, you name it. Really, really, really handy. Um, and you can hold down the shift key to have it kind of snap a little bit and you can get perfectly horizontal or vertical or 45 degree lines. Okay, um, we already went over the circle tool. Uh, again, I'm not going to cover selection tools in this video. The last one is called a dithering tool. And a dithering tool um, uses both of these colors, the primary and the secondary color. So you notice that my primary color is this, uh, is this green. And so if I brush here, you'll notice that it's brushing with green, but every other pixel is um, transparent. And that's because my secondary color is transparent. That's the checker pattern there. If I want to go ahead and choose a darker version of the green, and now when I paint, you'll see that I'm getting this uh, pure dithered uh, checkered look here. If you don't know what dithering is, um, with a lot of pixel graphics, it's meant for things like shading 
Um, so you can add in shade on a grass block or a sand block or something like that. And it's just a very nice way of putting in um, you know, a little bit more texture and color interest um, in your sprites. So uh, use both those colors there. You can always make your secondary color go back to transparent just by clicking on it there. And then there you go. Okay, so I'm going to call that um, it for this first video because I'm a little bit over 10 minutes. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, all of the settings over here on the right hand side. Um, actually, you know what? How about I go ahead and I'll show you how to save and export before we wrap this video up. Okay, so let's say I have this as my sprite and I'm pretty happy with that. So if I'm logged into my account, I can just click on this uh, third icon here for save and I can go ahead and give it a title and I'll just call it smile and then save to my gallery. And there it is, it's now saved to the cloud and on, I can go to any other device and I can go ahead and get that. Um, if you wanna bring this over to your game or you wanna send this um, to someone um, or for my students, if you wanna turn it in um, to Schoology, you can click on export and then um, there's a bunch of different options here. Um, popular one here is PNG, so click on the PNG tab. And then right here you click on the very first download option and then it downloads. Um, remember that all this gray checkerboard in the background is transparent, so that will not show up in your game. All right, I hope this helps you out. Um, and if you're like me and you like uh, pixel graphics, uh, no matter how old you are, um, I hope you use this tool. It is a great one. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.